briefly, we've played four events of the WSOP this year and we've been burned in every one of them except for one, which was the least amount buy-in and we cashed for a little over a min cash. It's been like, I don't know, it feels rough. You get so excited about the WSOP and then you fire and then things don't go well and then you get bummed out. That's kind of like where I'm at right now. I don't know, let me know what you guys think down below. The cash games are great, should I just play more cash games? Kind of save my energy? Cause like at this exact juncture, I don't even want to play the main event anymore. I'm just like so over it. I don't know. Let's hop into today's session. I feel really good about getting in to get some cash in. Hasn't been going our way in the cash game streets as of late, but today that all changes. I can feel it, I, I really do. And if it doesn't, eh, hopefully it was a good episode. Otherwise, let's hop into today's session. I appreciate you guys as always. Have a lovely day and let's play some freaking poker. Well, today's session is an absolute doozy. So as you guys can see from the length of the video, I'm gonna ask you guys to buckle up and to lock in for what is an incredible session, one that you guys don't wanna miss. Let's hop right into it. In this very first hand, there's no video, so just bear with me. Under the gun is where I stand, and I have pocket threes. I make it $35 to go. We're playing six or seven hand at this point. The button in the big blind call, and we're going off to a flop that comes queen, six, four with three spades. We do hold the three of spades, which is okay, I suppose. The action checked over to me. I'm going to go ahead and check it over to the button, who checks it back, and we're going off to a turn card that comes a six of diamonds. With the action checked over to me, I can sometimes bet here for some equity denial, or in this case, I actually want the button to bet because he's been pretty spewy, so why not allow him to try to spew again? I check it over to him. He actually checks it back, so now I'm a little worried. Just trying to get to the river, and, you know, it, it sounds stupid to say it. I only have pocket threes, but we were hoping to uh, have the opportunity to call a bluff here, but that is not a problem as of the river comes the three of clubs just like that we found a way to boat up the runner runner boat is always much funner and what's even better than that is that the big blind leads for 75 dollars with the action on to me i think raising is definitely in order the question is what is the size that makes sense it's gonna be hard to end up on this river here with a bluff anyways so i don't really think like sizing matters all that much the question is like how much can i raise and get called by right i make it 300 dollars the action folds over to the big blind who tanks for quite some time. And as he's tanking, he asks me if I have pocket threes. I keep myself quiet. He ends up making the fold and uh, good read on him. I do have pocket threes. Good for him. And just like that, we're moving over to the next hand. This next hand is a really fun one. So let's hop right into it. Early position limps. The hijack decides to isolate a $50. I find myself in the cutoff with five, six suited. It's really nice to three bet in position in these suited connectors. So. I make it $125 to go. I don't like my sizing in hindsight. I feel like 150, 170, even 200 makes more sense. We're in a cash game, going bigger is totally okay. Anyways, it folds back over to the hijack isolator who makes a call. We're going off to a flop that comes ace, six, deuce with two clubs and a spade. The action is checked over to me. I see bet for 90 bucks. Surprisingly, the opposition raises to $300. All right, now the question is like, what kind of value hands can my opponent have? It's hard for him to have sixes because I have a pair of sixes. I blocked that. And it's kind of ridiculous, I think, for him to isolate and then call a three bet with pocket deuces. So is he just slow playing aces and then just started to spring the trap? I don't know. Right now, it feels like he's weighted very heavily to flush draws. Even two pairs don't make any sense. Like a six and a deuce just don't make sense. So when it doesn't make sense, I think it's better to just make the call. So I end up doing that. The turn card comes a 10 of diamonds. It's kind of like a meh card. Like, I don't think it improves my opponent all that much unless he has like jack 10 of clubs, king 10 of club, queen 10 of clubs. But besides that, it kind of feels like, I, I don't really know. And the really weird part is the opponent decides to jam here for $1,000. He has me covered as 1,000 is the effective jam. That's what I have behind. And I'm deep into the tank at this point. What the heck can my opponent have here? What can possibly be doing this for value? It just feels like this is a flush draw all day, every day. It's just really hard to put him on a ton of value. I, maybe he has a hand like ace five of clubs or something like that. And just trying to get me to fold a better ace, even though he has a draw here. Maybe he has a hand like, like we said, king, queen of clubs, queen, jack of clubs, king, jack of clubs. Jack, nine of clubs. There's a bunch of random like Broadway-ish clubs that I think make up my opponent's range. So after a pretty long tank for myself, I'm deciding to make the hero call. 
looking to fade the river, especially when my opponent says, I'm going to need some help. And the river comes what looks like a brick as it comes the eight of spades. The villain pretty quickly shows ace eight of clubs. Damn. That's the trouble with having a good live read, except even the semi bluff was better than my hand. Damn. Well, that's the reality of going with your gut. And I was right. Like, it's just hard to have a ton of value hands. And I don't think he was jamming for value, especially when he says I'm going to need help. I think he thought he was bluffing and he thought he got there on the river. Little does he know I had like bottom pair, but anyways, let's move on to the next hand. Looking to build some traction so I can start climbing out of this hole I found myself in. We are in a spot where middle position makes it $35. The cutoff decides to make the call. The middle position player also makes a call and it gets over to me in the small blind and we look down at king queen offsuit. This is a pretty great situation to find yourself in. This is a pretty easy squeeze spot here in my opinion. I decided three bet to $180. Folds back over to the first raiser who thinks about it for a moment before deciding to make the fold. Middle position two, which was that first caller. He ends up back raised jamming to $405. Definitely never the nuts here. Folds back over to me. This is obviously a call here as it's only like 200 and some odd dollars for us to make the call, which we go ahead and do as at this point, it's just a formality. We're going off to a flop that comes 10, six, four with a spade and two diamonds. The turn card comes at three of diamonds and the river card comes the ace of clubs. No help for our hand. Our opponent shows ace seven offsuit. All right, good hand to you, sir. You caught me red-handed, three bet bluffing there. Uh, peeled, peeled one off with the A7 off and uh, unfortunate for us, we're gonna lose that hand. Things are not going well. I'm getting absolutely slam dunked on and uh, it feels like no end is in sight. Moving right along, we are under the gun and we're playing five or six hand at this point. I have pocket tens. That sounds like a race to me. $35 to go. The small blind makes a call and the big blind decides to three bet to $200. Considering I'm playing about a thousand effective here, I decide to just make the jam, isolating the small blind. Things seem to be going to plan as the small blind decides to call for less for about $300. The big blind makes the fold and we're going off to a flop. Heads up, several hundreds of dollars in the pot to hopefully bring me closer to even. The flop comes jack five, four, rainbow. The turn card comes a nine and the river card comes a queen. Yet another really bad run out for my hand. We table our pocket tens and our opponent shows queen six off suit. I'm going to say that one more time, just in case, just in case you didn't hear me, guys. Queen six off suit. Yeah. If you got, it's, I don't, what do I even say? It's just not my day, obviously. It just isn't. All right. Everything hasn't gone in my favor, but maybe this hand brings everything back to center. And maybe this will turn the tides. We are under the gun once again, and we look down an ace jack of diamonds. I make it $35 to go, plus one, the hijack, the cutoff, and the button all make the call. This is a perfect spot for the small blind to jam in his $700 stack as a perfect squeeze play with all the dead money in the middle. The action is folded back over to me, and I don't know. I don't think that this player is super tight. I think he's very capable of squeezing here, like maybe king jack suited, king queen suited, something like that. So, you know, after a bit of tanking, and understanding that, again, our character friend here has shown the propensity, like we mentioned already, to just call it off with queen six offsuit. Maybe we can get him in the hand as well. So I end up making the rejam. Rejamming for $1,500. Unfortunately, we have no more takers. Everyone folds. Maybe that is fortunate. I mean, my hand's not all that good. Hoping to turn the tides here, and the flop comes 10 5 3 rainbow. The turn card comes a seven of spades and the river comes a nine of clubs. It's going to be hard to win here and it'll be even harder when your opponent shows queen ten of clubs. So uh, we got it in good there, but uh, really good actually, but just things are not going in our favor. What the hell is going on? I'm getting frustrated. Things are not going in my favor. I'm only human. Maybe a little bit of tilt is setting in. I'm going to go ahead and take a walk because I desperately need it at this point. Man. <laughs> My attitude from the pre-session to right now is drastically different. Desperately, things are not working out. And let's talk a little bit about what the hell's going on. We keep getting not helped by the deck, I guess. I don't know. 
uh, we're getting it in with the best hand just not holding or getting it in just it's just not working out well guys and we're stuck and i'm frustrated you know right now it feels like when daniel granu if you guys have been watching any of his vlogs he talks about going on like on mega till where it just feels like the deck has been against you i just gotta like zen and remember like look last month the deck was so in my favor that it's just like the things have to regress it just doesn't work like that you can't win every single hand and every single session but you've got to mitigate the problems you got to mitigate the issues and right now we've got to get back in there with their head on straight and make the comeback that everybody expects us and wants us to make so i'm gonna try to lock in here focus up i need to just wash my hands of the the dirty energy and just lock in so appreciate you guys always for watching the videos um let's i feel good about this like let's let's just get in there and, and let's just go for it man <sighs> let's get it baby bad energy's gone good energy's here smash the like button help me get through this session all right after shaking off some of the jitters or that bad juju i'm feeling a little better let's see if the cards are sharing that sentiment we're in a position yet again with queen 10 of clubs it's now our turn to win with this hand i make it 35 dollars to go middle position and the small blind both call we're going three ways off to a flop that is pretty reasonable jack 10 8 rainbow Oddly enough, the small blind decides to lead out for $60. I'm never folding my pair in a gut shot and an over, so I make the call. We're going heads up to a turn card that comes of four of hearts. Changes nothing to the board, and even more worrying is my opponent doesn't stop betting. $180 is the new bet. Considering I called the flop and not a lot has changed, uh, maybe he can have a nine here sometimes, like 10-9, 8-9. So I end up making the call, hoping to see a pretty bricky river or something that improves us. And that is exactly what it comes. A nine of diamonds. We now ended up with a straight here on the river. And oddly enough, as you guys can see from the video, our opponent checked to us in the dark. Trying to come up with the right sizing seems pretty not really important because I only have $400 in my stack. I decide to jam $405, which my opponent pretty quickly decides to fold, showing a jack face up. All right, there we go. We were behind and we got there. Maybe that's the trick to make money today. Well, hopefully we don't have to do that all that much. Let's try to get a good run of hands in and let's battle back and really make a comeback to remember. The comeback is looking for the cherry on top or a little bit of fries with the burger, except this is the main course. This is the entree under the gun and we look down at pocket aces. We make it $35 to go. Two players from middle position call. The button calls and the big one calls. We're going five freaking ways. This is not what I envisioned. The flop comes king, queen, deuce, with two hearts and a spade. All right, not too bad. It's hard for my opponents to have kings, queens, maybe deuces as available. I end up seabating a little bit on the larger side, $125 to go. And we're going off to a turn card that comes a four of diamonds. This is where things are a little annoying. My SPR is not right. I didn't start the hand with 150 big blinds. We started with, I don't know, somewhere around 1200 bucks or I don't know, something in that range, maybe a thousand bucks even. And the issue is, is now I sit on this turn card with $820. It'd be really nice to bomb this turn card. I think that it's really nice to balance yourself to bet big on these turns. When I have ace, 10 of hearts, jack, 10 of hearts, jack, nine of hearts, ace, jack of hearts. There's going to be a ton of like big combo draws I'll have here. And it's nice to bomb it. The other big thing is I don't have a heart. So that means it's more likely that my opponent has a flush draw and it's going to be more than likely, the best thing that we can do is get as much money in the middle as we can when we know we have the best hand and our opponent is still drawing and wants to put more money in. We end up jamming it all in for $820. My opponent goes deep into the tank. Trying to not give anything away, I'm sitting here stoically in my seat. My opponent doesn't even really look me up or down. He's just kind of looking into outer space before eventually deciding on a fold. So, you know, I guess that's okay. It's unfortunate, like I said, Picked the wrong sizing on the flop, I think. We should have went a little larger so that on the turn card, the shove wasn't so ridiculous. But as it may be, our opponent did later on tell us that he folded top pair. So unfortunate, but at this point, I'm just happy to bring some money in my direction. Feels great. Really. This next hand is freaking crazy, so buckle up. Under the gun makes it $35. Middle position makes it $140. And the cutoff, four bed jams for $290. It's almost just like, you know, out of like respect that we peel a hand here in the big blind. You know, we just look down and get ready to fold. Except we look down at a king, 
followed by an ace. Well, we now have a monster, like a super monster, especially against a four bet jammer who is uh, the foe who had a seven off and queen six off earlier. This is a finally our time to shine, finally to put him away for the count. We decide to five bet squeeze it up here to six hundred ten dollars. Hard to be balanced here, you know. I'm not gonna have a ton of bluffs, but maybe against him I'd be doing this with a weaker holding, like maybe tens or nines. Because again, I'm just knowing that this guy's willing to just get in the mix. It falls back over to the initial three better who thinks about it over some time before starting a debate about whether there is an ability that I can raise here if the other gentleman raised it enough for me to be able to reopen the betting or whatever. Uh, that gets sorted out, ends up eventually making the fold, and we go off to a run out that comes. Ace, deuce, three, flopping top pair here. The turn card comes in eight, introducing a backdoor flush run. The river comes a jack of clubs. Hopefully no ace jack. We show our hand, and in fact, it is good. We finally take down our foe of the session. Every great fairy tale needs its antagonist, and today we have taken him down finally. Unfortunately, we doubled him up for significantly more than these little chips, but hey, this is starting a good run of cards. I can feel it. I just know it. Well, as you guys can see, we have been on a string of some good luck. Things have been in our favor, and we are on the upward trajectory. Anyways, in this next chat pro hand of the day, get your chat fingers ready to type in as this is a doozy. We're playing six-handed here, and there is no video, so forgive me for that. But I find myself in early position with eight, seven of diamonds. I raise it up to $35. The button and the small blind are the only callers, and we're going off to a flop that comes queen, seven, four, with two spades and one diamond. I decided to see bed here, as this is not a bad board for my hand, and not too bad for my range either. I make it $40, and unfortunately, out of nowhere, out of the blue, the button decides to raise to $145. The action folded back to me. Like we talked about earlier in the hand where I had five, six of spades and my opponent had a flush draw, but was always to also top pair. I don't think I can fold at this exact juncture. It's just really hard for my opponent to have, you know, anything other than maybe the bottom set here, which would be threes. I really don't know. So I'm going to go and call as folding seems ridiculous. So we're going off to a turn card that comes the king of clubs. With the action checked over to my opponent, he decides to bet once again for $250. All right, this sizing feels a little more milky and less like super spewy or polarizing, but the question is still posed, and I'm going to pose it to you as it's been posed to me. What value holdings can my opponent possibly double barrel here with? Besides pocket threes, and even then, I feel like you got to size up on the turn here as there's just a ton of value that you'd be missing out on, I'd imagine, against a holding like Jack 10 of heart against a holding like Jack 10 of spades, ace 10 of spades, vice versa, et cetera, et cetera. So with all that being said, I don't know. It just feels like not right for some reason. Maybe king, queen, but even then, that's kind of like a weird raise sometimes. People don't do that, and this player's a really good player, so I just don't think he'd be doing that. This honestly feels like a bluff to me. At this point, I will pose a question to you. Is this a bluff, or is this value? And what do you think my opponent has here? I'll give you guys five seconds to make your quick chatters down below. Let me know what you guys think. All right. Well, after a bit of thinking, it's honestly quite a bit of a tank. I end up deciding to make the call. We're going off to a river card that comes a beautiful brick as it comes the deuce of diamonds. The flush draws miss. The straight draws miss as well. Now we find ourselves in a pretty interesting situation when I check it over to my opponent and he's deep into the tank. At this point, I know immediately that no matter what he bets, I'm going to call. Whether you guys like that, whether you hate it, you know, I guess we'll leave it up to the chat pros. But it's just so hard to end up on this river here with the value holding besides pocket threes. I blocked the sevens. He's going to three bet all the queens. And if you guys are really interested, if you guys like pay attention to the video, I'm going to mention this quickly as I'm going to try to tie this whole thing together. Pre-flop, when I raised, he made just the call, right? The small blind called with a $100 chip. At that moment, my opponent was a little confused and was worried about that being a 3-bet. And if it was, did it stand? And he was talking about, oh, oh yeah, I guess I can't bring my bet back either. It stays, right? He already made the call. All this playing in my head, these are where the live tells come in. They're just so blatant. They're so obvious. 
he can like literally only have pocket threes here because he was willing to fold to a three bet, right? I don't think he has any value hands. Like besides threes, there's just a ton of flush draw breaks out, right? He ends up tanking for like a minute before eventually deciding on checking it through. We show our hand with pride and he lets us know that that is good. Really long winded. It was not even that ridiculously high of a pot, but it was a lot of high level thinking. And I'm glad you guys got to hear my what happened live. You guys could see a little bit about what I was talking about. And these are really big things to pick up in your, you know, local games. People are just constantly giving away live tells and you've got to be, you know, cognizant of that. You've got to be aware of it and really capitalize on it because you're just going to be losing it some value if you aren't doing so. In this next video, like I said, these last few videos, we didn't have any video because my phone died and we're charging it now, but bear with me. The story is all the same. The straddle is on as we've now agreed to play 5, 10, 20. Again, in this commerce, I said every episode, it's not a straddle, it's considered a blind raise, meaning that that is dead. There's no action in the straddle. It's literally just dead money. The button decides to make it $60 to go. I find myself in the big blind. I decide to make the call with nine, seven of clubs. Everyone else folds. We're going heads up to a flop that comes ace, eight, king with two clubs. We flop a straw for the fuss straw. I check it over to my opponent. He decides to bet $50. At this point, I'm, you know, kind of faced with the problem of, do I raise here? I have only nine high flush draw. It'd be really nice to raise here and get a fold out of better holdings. It's hard for us not to be beat here, whether that's jack high or pair of aces or even a set, right? I end up deciding to play this cautiously. I am out of position. It's never great playing, you know, big draws out of position. So I end up making the, just the call. We're going to have to a turn card that comes a four of diamonds. I check it over to my opponent and yet again, he bets a pretty small probing bet, $100 to go. The question now becomes, if I make the call and I do hit, what are the chances I get called? And against this specific opponent, I'm going to say fairly often. People just don't believe me at these stakes. So I'm going to end up making the call. We're going off to a river card that comes a 10 of clubs. Yes, that's exactly what we needed. That's exactly what's going to get us unstuck. And better yet, I'm in the tank trying to decide what the right sizing is. For a moment, I think about throwing out the blocker bet, making it like $70 or whatever, and seeing what my opponent does. But then I realize I don't think my opponent is capable of ever bluff raising me on this river. And if that's the case, screw it all. Let's just polarize. I'm going to go ahead and make it $350 to go. Again, going a little bit on the larger sizing. And I could not even get my bet out fast enough before my opponent throws out the $1 chip. The signal a call. We immediately show our hand and he is disgusted. And it seems like he might have had a set there. Hard to tell, but uh, whatever the case may be, we are happy we won the hand. And we're going to get gone like a bandit. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and win that pot and move along. Alrighty. Like I said, things have been going on in our favor. We haven't lost a hand in quite some time. Things are going up. And we are almost back to the black. Back in black. And this following hand, the straddle is on, as we have confirmed. Under the gun makes it $40 off of around a $400 starting stack. Pretty short here. That is like 20 big blinds. With the action folded over to me in the small blind, we looked down at a monster. We looked down at Ace King yet again, and it did us a beautiful service the last time we had it. Let's see if he could do it for us once again. We three bet to $205. It folds back over to that player who decides to jam it in for 400 bucks. At this point, these are just formalities. We flick in the call immediately, and we're going off to a flop that comes Ace Jack 9. Beautiful, just what we needed. Current card is a three, and the river card comes a five. Our opponent immediately says when the flop came out, oh, no, I hope you don't have an ace. When he says that, I immediately flip over my holding. He shows pocket queens, and that classic race comes to an end. Luckily for us, we were able to win this pot. It feels great, and just like that, we are completely unstuck, and it feels amazing to battle out. Hoping to follow up the success of the previous hand with another banger. The button makes it $60 to go as a straddle is on. We are in the small blind. Look down at pocket sevens. We end up making the call. The straddler makes the call as well. Three ways off to a beautiful flop that comes jack seven five. Where was this earlier? Better late than never though. Who's complaining? Action checks over to the straddler who decides to lead out here. The old donkley play is really interesting. And very much so when the opponent decides to lead out for half pot about $90. The action's back over to me, looking to make some bigger pots a brew in now. I raised to $225. It's really hard to have a bluff here. 
Even then, if he has like 6-4, then, you know, again, it's better to raise now and get some more money in the middle. I make it 225. My opponent pretty quickly makes a call. And we're going off to a turn card that comes the Ace of Clubs. Almost too good of a card here. The problem is now is it does introduce a backdoor flush drop. But, again, this Ace is not going to be great for the Straddler's, you know, leading range on the flop. And I think at the time, I didn't really put all of that into consideration. I end up bombing it for $500. Hoping that we just coolered our opponent and he has like something like pocket fives or some kind of random two pair or hopefully maybe like ace jack. Not a great deal of time passes before he decides to lay it down. Unfortunate there as we could not get any more value from our big set there. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on to the last hand of the session. In the final hand of the session, we have one of the biggest pots we play. So let's hop right into it. The straddle is on early position. Armenian Matt decides to limp it in here. We look down at pocket jacks. Well, he destroyed us last night on the splash quads. Let's see if we can get a little bit of it back. We decide to raise to $125 for the cutoff. The button decides to make the cold call. Matt makes a call and we're going off to a flop that comes 1085 rainbow. With the action checked over to me, I decided to see that pretty small here for $125. My whole range would probably be doing this. I don't see myself betting this board all that often but what i do i think third pot seems okay only the button makes a call matt folds and we're going to the turn card that comes with four of clubs it does introduce a backdoor club draw as well as does bring in some straights i decide to make it 300 dollars, and my opponent feeds his eyes over to me like a laser beam and decides to race to 800 dollars. okay this is a little interesting sure he can have a straight here sometimes but cold calling seems you know, a little bit interesting with 6-7 here. But I'm going to have to look him up at least one time. So I make the call. And we're going off to a river card that pairs the board as it comes up 5. The, the flush draw bricks out here and not a whole lot to really be mentioning. I check it over to my opponent. And without even a thought, my opponent checks it back instantly. When that happens, we're pretty confident in our hand for the most part. We decide to show our pocket jacks. Our opponent taps the table and lets us know that we're good. He was letting us know that that river was just going to be not a good one to bluff. As it is true, it's hard to bluff board pairing rivers people don't like to fold and as you guys know i don't like to fold either that is going to come with just just a massive sigh of relief as our session comes to an end the night is getting far far too late it's over three o'clock in the morning i've got to be a good boy and get the heck to sleep let's start over to me in person let's see how the hell we're recovering after what was quite the roller coaster of emotions <sighs> there is something about battling back that gets the blood going guys i don't think i would have wanted this session any other way i wanted to battle i wanted to feel it i told you guys at the mid-session update i swore to you guys i promised you guys there was no way i was gonna leave today without being up and i have some good news to share with you guys but before we get to the numbers it could have been much better we just didn't get value in so many spots there's even spots that i didn't even add to the vlog where just flop a big hand or turn a big hand and uh i made a pretty crazy play in one hand so much so that i I actually don't want to share it on the vlog because the person that I did it against watches the vlog. So weird meta game, but uh, you guys usually ask that. Oh, do people watch your vlog and how do they play against you? This is the one time I will hold information. But oh my gosh, guys, today was uh, <sighs> maybe call me an idiot, but this is more exciting. This high is definitely more than any of the last sessions. Honestly, it rivals winning 20k at the bike, and I did nothing like that today. And the reason is, is because I freaking battled back and I earned it. We were into today's game for like 3K. It could be 3K or 3,200. I might have miscounted, but it's one of the two. And we were out for 46.30. So a uh, profit of, let's just call it in the neighborhood of 1,600 to 1,500. I am so freaking happy. We were stuck for quite a bit and uh, we just found a way to battle back. And, and that felt really great. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. Um, oh. I'm telling you, these, these sessions are getting to me, man. And this was one of the longest sessions I put in in a while. Man, there's just something about getting out of the hole. Let me know in the comment section, how do you guys feel about getting out of the hole? I know some people just like the big win, the big hurrah, but there is something about getting out of the hole. It's the equivalent in baseball, base is loaded. You only have like one out and you're up by a run, ninth inning, bottom of the ninth, and we just find a way to get out of a jam. And, uh, I don't even know how we did it. But anyways, I appreciate you guys so much for watching these episodes. Um, again, a big thank you to Mike, who's editing all these videos, even with his busy schedule. And he's uh, been really making my life a little easier for sure. Thank you for all of you guys that have been constantly supporting 
Like we talked about earlier, I'm a little hesitant. I'm, you know, continuing to play the WSOP. One, the videos don't do that good on the channel, and two, it's a lot of time investment, and uh, when you don't catch, it's pretty demoralizing. Either way, let's not rain on today's parade, man. I'm so happy we got unstuck. I'm so happy we made another episode, and I'm so happy today's episode is a banger. Happy Monday, guys. Have a lovely day. Stay happy, stay healthy, and more importantly, guys, run good at the tables, y'all. Deuces.